I'm going to review some basic statistical terms. Let's start with mean and standard deviation. Well, the mean, and you may know it as an average, is a single number used to describe the central tendency of a group of numbers. So for example, a typical exam, uh, uh, situation might be a classroom. Maybe there's 50 students and they, they get grades back and the grades can be all over the place. Well, if somebody asked, how well did your class do? You wouldn't say, well, one student got this, another student got this, and, and go through all the grades. What you do is you add them all up and divide them by the number of grades, and you get an average. And that one number sort of says, hey, this is how my class did. It's a central tendency. Now, the standard deviation is a little bit different. It tells you the spread of scores. So what it says is, if you did that test with 50 students and the mean was 70, if the standard deviation was zero, that means everybody got 70. Uh, or if the standard deviation was 10 or 20, what it means is the scores jumped around a bit. Some people got 30, some people got 50. And so the standard deviation is a measure of the spread of values. All the values could be the same, they could be different, or they could be all over the place. So those are two really important terms that you need to know, the average or mean, and then the spread or standard deviation. Here's a picture of the spread of a normal distribution. So what you have is here is the mean, well, that's this, num this long line here, and then the numbers spreading out beautifully in what you might know as a bell curve. And this is one standard deviation away from the mean, and this is two, and this is three. So that's a normal distribution. And statistics actually assumes that your sample has a normal distribution. But there are different kinds of distributions. You might get a skewed distribution. So your sample, say 50 students, may be skewed to the right or the left. Maybe most students got a really, really good grade, but there's sort of this sliding thing here where there's a number that didn't. So the, maybe there's a lot of students, well, a certain group of students did well and then a lot of students didn't or they did poorly. So you could have this kind of non-normal distribution. More than likely in the real world, when we have numbers around 20 and 30, they kind of go all over the place. So you can see distributions like this where you get you sort of get this high grade and then like a whole bunch of that's kind of skewed there. And then this is uh, uh, really high and then low. And so it's not even. So we can have nice pictures, but our distributions sometimes, probably more often than not, don't look like those beautiful bell curves. So what does that have to do with anything? So, well, actually, just you may have done a histogram when you were young, and, and a histogram is really just a, a measure of frequency of, of test scores, for example, and, you, you ha and they all spread out in a nice little uh, curve. So what does that have to do with uh, statistics? Well, inferential statistics, the word inference or predicting, assumes that the sample has a relatively normal distribution. Your sample, because you can't collect information from everyone, you pick a sample, sometimes at random, uh, but you pick a sample and you are making some sort of assumption that the sample represents or says something about the larger population. And we want that sample to have a relatively normal distribution. So we don't pick a bias sample. If we did pick a bias sample, the distribution of values. So say we were testing intelligence, and if we, we went in and tested a gifted class, well, that's, that's a bias sample. So that's probably not representative of the normal distribution. Uh, these tests that we're talking about, uh, t-tests and ANOVAs and the kind of tests we're covering, the basic sort of statistical tests are robust with numbers with an N or a sample size greater than 20. Although I like to have it greater than 30, to be honest, and I actually like to get it in the hundreds, but uh, can't always do that. Class sizes are around 20, so you're good with that. The tests are relatively robust. So what kind of tests? Well, we can do an independent t-test, and that means we're comparing the means of two and only two different groups. 
For example, males versus females, class A versus class B, school A versus school B, or a control group that doesn't get a treatment, and a treatment group. So those are two independent groups, and we're comparing them. The paired t-test is a little bit different. It's actually looking at the same group, but at two different times. So a group pre, uh, pre-test versus a post-test, or a pre-treatment versus a post-treatment. Notice that it's the same group. We're, testing, we're giving the, the, the same group a pre-test, and we're giving the same group a post-test. Because it's the same group, we use a paired t-test. Uh, basically, time one versus time two. And remember, this is only at two different times. Okay, so we're comparing two means. Well, how do we do that? Well, we throw it into SPS and it gives SPSS and it gives us its magic. Uh, the one thing we can't do is just look at the means and say, well, 50 is bigger than 45, so that's bigger. That's not good enough. Um, particularly with Madison, you can imagine we, we want to have some some reliability. We want to be confident in our in our our conclusions. So we insist that it has to be statistically different. So each statistical test uh, will produce a p value, a probability value. And if that p value is less than 0 0.05, which if you convert a decimal to a statistic uh, to a percent, that's five percent. If it's less than five percent, we can say the result we say the result is statistically significant. In other words, there's less than a 5% chance that we're wrong. Okay, so you look at that p-value, if it's less than 0 0.05, there's a statistically significant difference, for example, between two means. Or it could be a correlation. We'll talk about that later, but it could be a statistically significant correlation. With a t-test, we say that one mean is larger than another mean and that the result is statistically significant or perhaps not statistically significant. One last problem. If we collect data from a thousand students, we think, wow, that's a great idea. That will definitely be representative of the larger population. However, statistical difference kind of gets messed up a bit because the results may not always be meaningful. They could be statistically different, but they may not be meaningful or practically different. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we have a large sample size, very large sample size, a really small difference, for example, in grades, uh, might be statistically significant. So, for example, if you have a sample size of 1,000, a grade different, uh, a grade difference of 2% could be statistically significant. But any teacher would know that, well, 2% really, that doesn't mean anything. That's not practical. So what do we do? We use Cohen's D to measure the effect size. And that will tell us whether it's a meaningful difference. And those are some basic terms in statistics.